I was born in 1989, um, so I weren't out of but my dad brought a minor, and his dad brought a minor, and his dad brought a minor, and I'm very, very proud of my coal mining heritage, obviously, as you would be. Um, but Aubrey Truth and Justice campaign asked me to write a poem for their first compilation CD. And at the time, I'd been doing a lot of research about the Peterloo Massacre in Manchester, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, the Peterloo Massacre occurred 165 years before the Battle of Orgreave. But to be quite honest with you, when you read about the two, it's a little bit like playing spot the difference. Um, so this is a poem that I wrote which drew some rather ugly parallels. 60,000 hungry souls flocked towards St Peter's Square. And apparently even sunshine came creeping through Mancunian air. The powerless and impoverished were somehow optimistic when less than 3% could vote. How's that for a statistic? These were peaceful, forward-thinking people, out of sight and out of mind, living in the city slums where poverty was redefined. And all the while the wanting change and hopeful of progression, but as usual, the state replied with unprovoked aggression. 60,000 hungry souls came to speak in silence, came to speak without a voice, came not seeking violence. 60,000 hungry souls pursued the greater good. They tried provoking dialogue, but went home soaked in blood. They had no valid ownership of hope or opportunity. The Corn Laws ripped their heart and soul and crippled their community. And yet there they were with a distant dream of equal representation on the dogged road to democracy, defeating degradation. And despite the fact they were peaceful, as they gathered there en masse, the very fact they'd had the cheek to challenge the ruling class soon provoked the cavalry to charge their lowly neighbours and storm the crowds on horseback, armed with muskets, whips and sabres. And the official word? Well, they were rioting. This was merely a restoration of order. Some folk died from sabre wounds. Some were shot and others were trampled to death. Women, children and infants were among the innocent victims and anybody reporting was arrested at the scene. And it's totalitarian tricks of the mind when the public are attacked but were suddenly to find that they are the ones being blamed for the, wood, for the blood, theirs are the names being dragged through the mud, when basic rights are the rag to the bull, the policeman's truncheon cracks on the skull and you run and you plead and you beg and you bleed, but never mind a doctor, it's a lawyer that you need. And you marvel at the progression of 165 years when the victims of oppression are criminalised and smeared. Official statements forged or lost or rife with contradiction or as it seems on many parts, a total work of fiction. Scargill's men were tarnished as the enemy within and 30 years later will support through thick and thin when protective wings of government treat working folk as feral at Peterloo and at Orgreave Forget them at your peril. Cheers. Yeah.